Lebanon, one of the world's smallest sovereign states, the Middle Eastern Republic of Lebanon is situated on a long, narrow strip of land on the eastern shore of the Mediterranean Sea in Western Asia. Lebanon extends roughly 135 miles 217 kilometers in length and measures approximately 25 to 55 miles 40 to 89 kilometers in width. Lebanon is bordered on the north and east by Syria and on the south by Israel. Beirut is the capital and largest city. Area 4,036 square miles 10,452 square kilometers. Population 2019 est. 6,173,000. Land and climate, Lebanon is a rugged land with two mountain ranges that are almost parallel. The Lebanon mountains extend the length of the country close to the narrow Mediterranean coastal plain. In the east the anti-Lebanon mountains rise along the Syrian border. Between the two mountain ranges lies the high, fertile Bekaa Valley. The valley receives water from Lebanon's chief river, the Latani. The Latani flows southward, then abruptly turns westward, runs through a deep gorge in the Lebanon mountains, and empties into the Mediterranean Sea. Lebanon's Mediterranean coast has warm, dry summers and mild, rainy winters. Summers in the Bekaa Valley are hot and dry, and winters are cool. During winter, high winds and heavy rains and snows lash the mountains, particularly the western slopes. Plant life in Lebanon varies with altitude and climate. Large groves of orange and olive trees thrive in the rich coastal soil, and farmers also grow bananas, figs, grapes, and other fruits there. Apples and potatoes are raised in the foothills. The Bekaa Valley is an equally rich farming region, producing tobacco, vegetables, cotton, grains, and mulberries. In the mountains much of the soil is barren. Erosion has destroyed almost all the natural vegetation, leaving only scattered bush and scrub. The cedars for which Lebanon is famous remain only in protected groves. People and culture, population density in Lebanon is high, but the people are unevenly distributed, the greatest densities are in urban areas, where roughly nine-tenths of the population resides. Most Lebanese are Arabs. About one-eighth of the population is Palestinian Arab, and there are small minorities of Kurds and Armenians. Arabic is the official language, but French and English also are spoken. Lebanon is noted for its diverse religious communities, of which there are about 17 that are officially recognized. The majority are Arabic and all speak Arabic, though some minorities also use their communal languages periodically. Muslims make up more than half of the population, roughly half of them are Sunnis and half are Shiites. More than one-third of the people follow some form of Christianity. Maronites make up the largest Christian community, and there are small minorities of Greek Catholics, Armenian Apostolic, Greek Orthodox, and other Christian denominations. There is a small but strong community of Druzes, an independent religious sect with ancient origins in the Middle East. Lebanon also has small communities of Muslim Kurds and Jews. Nearly nine-tenths of the people can read and write thanks to Lebanon's excellent educational system. Opportunities for higher education are available at a large number of institutions, including St. Joseph University, the American University of Beirut, the Lebanese University, and the Beirut Arab University. Economy The Lebanese economy has traditionally been based on trade, most notably because of Beirut's role as a major shipping port and its position as the banking center of the Middle East. However, the economy was badly disrupted in the late 20th century by violence from civil war and foreign occupations. In 1993 the Lebanese government implemented a $20 billion reconstruction program aimed at infrastructure and economic repair. Services now form the largest economic sector, employing most of the labor force. Industry is also important, key products include cement, food products, wood products, and textiles. Agriculture is a relatively small though vital sector. Much of Lebanon's transportation network was badly damaged during the civil war. Large-scale repairs begun in the 1990s restored many roads, though the rail system remains largely unusable. There are ports at several coastal cities, and international air service is available at Beirut. Government, Lebanon is a multi-party republic. Its constitution was adopted in 1926 and was subsequently amended several times. It provides for a one-house parliament, the National Assembly, formerly the Chamber of Deputies, composed of members elected by popular vote for four-year terms. 
Distribution of parliamentary seats is accorded along sectarian lines. A 1989 agreement called for an equal number of Christian and Muslim assembly members, replacing the earlier ratio that favored Christians. By unwritten convention, selection of the executive branch of the government also is based on religion. The assembly elects a president, who must be a Maronite Christian, to serve for six years. He in turn appoints a Sunni Muslim prime minister. The legislature chooses a Shiite as speaker of the assembly. History, the region that includes Lebanon had many rulers in ancient times, including the Phoenicians, Greeks, Romans, and Byzantines. Christianity was established in the region during the 5th century, followed by Islam two centuries later. For many centuries the mountainous terrain prevented conquerors from completely subjugating the people, and the region became a refuge for persecuted minorities. The Maronites established themselves in the north, and the Druzes found shelter in the south. Little friction occurred between the two communities until the 19th century. Peasant revolts against landowners then turned into wars between the Druzes and Maronites, and by 1860 thousands had been killed. The Turkish sultans of the Ottoman Empire, who conquered the region in the 16th century, assisted the Druzes and Muslims. The Maronites looked to France and the West for support. After Turkey's defeat in World War I, France received a mandate from the League of Nations to prepare the region for eventual independence. Lebanon was carved out of Greater Syria and became the only state in the Middle East with a Christian majority. After the fall of France in 1940, the Free French government agreed to end the mandate. Lebanon became independent in 1943. A period of brief prosperity and relative freedom followed. However, the emergence of an Arab nationalist movement, the birth of Israel in 1948, and inequality among Lebanese factions led to widespread unrest. In 1958 discontented religious groups revolted against the government. The insurrection was put down with the aid of United States troops. In 1970 the Palestine Liberation Organization PLO, transferred its headquarters to Lebanon after it had been expelled from Jordan. Palestinian guerrillas launched attacks on Israel, and in response the Lebanese government tried to curb the PLO's military activities. The violent situation, together with Muslim demands for more power in the government, led to civil war between Muslims and Christians in 1975. About 60,000 Lebanese were killed during the first two years of the war. From 1976 to 1982 thousands of Syrian troops and a multinational United Nations force attempted to enforce a tenuous ceasefire among Christians, Muslims, Palestinians, and Israelis. In June 1982 Israeli forces invaded Lebanon, intent on driving the PLO out of southern Lebanon. About 14,600 troops of the PLO withdrew from Beirut in August. With the retirement of President Elias Sarkis, the 1982 election was won by Christian, phalangist, militia leader Bashir Gamal. He was killed later that year when a bomb exploded in the phalangist headquarters. The assassination brought an immediate advance by Israeli forces into Beirut. The next day a Lebanese Christian militia massacred some 600 Palestinian civilians in Beirut refugee camps that were under Israeli control. A multinational peacekeeping force of largely French, Italian, and American troops was sent to Beirut. Gamal's brother, Amin, was elected to the presidency at the end of September. In May 1983 Lebanon and Israel signed an agreement calling for the withdrawal of Israeli and Syrian troops from the country. Syria rejected the plan, however. By midsummer Lebanon was in chaos, with battles raging between various factions. In September Israel redeployed its troops into southern Lebanon. The Syrian-backed Druzes then launched an offensive into the areas that had been vacated by the Israelis. In February 1984 the multinational peacekeeping forces began leaving Beirut. Israeli troops began their withdrawal from southern Lebanon in 1985, remaining only at the Lebanon-Israel border and leaving Lebanon divided between warring factions. Prime Minister Rashid Karami was assassinated in June 1987 when a bomb exploded aboard his military helicopter. Selim al Haas was named acting Prime Minister. Amin Gamal's term of office ended in 1988, and the National Assembly failed to elect a new president. Gamal appointed an interim military government, headed by Michel Aoun. Aoun declared a war of liberation against Syria and rejected the Lebanese parliament's 1989 election of René Mouad as president, claiming he was merely a Syrian puppet. 
Mowad was assassinated soon thereafter, and the parliament elected Elias Hirwawi to succeed him. Awan occupied the presidential palace and refused to surrender power. Lebanese legislators created a new charter in Taif, Saudi Arabia, that redistributed political power between rival religious groups in Lebanon's parliament, but warfare resumed in 1990. In October Awan was ousted by a Syrian-led military attack. Recovery from 16 years of civil war began as Lebanon's private armies and the PLO began to surrender their weapons in 1991. By May the Lebanese army had regained control of the Mediterranean ports, though Syria retained troops in the country to enforce a peace pact. In 1998 military commander Gen. Emile Lahoud succeeded Hawawi as president. Lahoud chose al Haas as his prime minister. The latter was replaced in 2000 by Rafiq al-Hariri, a wealthy businessman who had previously served as prime minister from 1992 to 1998. In May 2000 Israel withdrew all troops from southern Lebanon. Hariri served as prime minister until 2004. The following year he was assassinated in a car bombing, and many people believed that the Syrian government had orchestrated the killing. Relations with Syria grew strained, and people began calling for withdrawal of Syrian troops, which had remained in Lebanon since the civil war. Hundreds of thousands of Lebanese, both against and for the Syrian presence, poured into the streets in a series of spontaneous mass protests. The last Syrian troops left Lebanon by mid-2005. Periodic clashes of violence were ongoing between Israel and Hezbollah, an Islamic militia group and political party in Lebanon that was supported by Syria and Iran. Tensions flared in July 2006, when Hezbollah launched an armed operation against Israel from southern Lebanon. Hezbollah killed a number of Israeli soldiers and abducted two as prisoners of war. This led Israel to launch a major military offensive against Hezbollah in Lebanon. In the 34-day war, more than 1,100 Lebanese and about 160 Israelis were killed, and some 1 million Lebanese were displaced. Lebanon faced a political crisis when Lahoud's term as president expired in late 2007 without a successor having been named. The National Assembly's attempt to select a new president was suspended in deadlock by a boycott. The boycott was led by the pro-Syrian opposition, including Hezbollah, which sought a greater share of political power. As the crisis drew on, the Lebanese government planned to shut down Hezbollah's private telecommunications network. Clashes erupted in Beirut in May 2008 between Hezbollah forces and supporters of the government, with Hezbollah quickly taking control of parts of the city. The government soon reversed its decision about Hezbollah's telecommunications network. In an agreement negotiated in Qatar, Hezbollah secured veto power in the cabinet, allowing it to effectively control all major decisions. Finally, in May 2008, General Michel Suleiman was elected president. He reappointed Fouad Siniora, who had been prime minister since mid-2005, at the head of a new unity government. In late 2008 Syria and Lebanon established formal diplomatic ties for the first time. After elections in 2009, Saad al-Hariri, the son of former prime minister Rafiq al-Hariri and the leader of a pro-Western bloc, was named prime minister. After months of negotiations, he formed a unity government. However, the functioning of the government was impeded by political tension regarding the United Nations Special Tribunal for Lebanon. The tribunal was investigating the assassination of Rafiq al-Hariri. When it became apparent in 2010 that members of Hezbollah were likely to be indicted in connection with the killing, Hezbollah demanded that Lebanon reject the tribunal. A group of ministers from Hezbollah and its allies then resigned, causing the unity government to collapse. In January 2011 Najib Makati became prime minister, having gained the support of Hezbollah and its allies. In June 2011 the UN tribunal issued arrest warrants for four suspects in the killing of Rafiq al-Hariri, who were identified by Lebanese officials as Hezbollah commanders and operatives. Meanwhile, civil war had broken out in Syria in March 2011 with an uprising against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The war led to heightened political tensions in Lebanon. Some Lebanese factions supported the Assad regime, while others did not. Makati faced difficulties in managing these factions, and he stepped down as prime minister in March 2013. He was replaced by Tamim Salam. Lebanon's political system fell into a state of virtual paralysis in 2014 when Suleiman's term as president expired.
the National Assembly was unable to elect his replacement, largely owing to boycotts by two opposing factions. Because of the boycotts, there were not enough members present for the Assembly to officially conduct business. Finally, a deal was reached in 2016, with Hezbollah ally Michel Aoun selected as the new president. As part of the deal, Saad al-Hariri of the opposing faction became prime minister again in December 2016. An unusual incident occurred in late 2017, while Hariri was visiting Saudi Arabia. Hariri suddenly announced his resignation as prime minister in a recorded address that included criticisms of Iran and Hezbollah. In Lebanon, both allies and rivals of Hariri suspected that Saudi Arabia was holding him against his will and had pressured him to resign. Later reports largely confirmed these suspicions. After Western and Arab diplomats petitioned the Saudi government, Hariri was released. He returned to Lebanon, where he quickly took back his resignation. In the media it was reported that Saudi Arabia had been upset with Hariri for refusing to take a more confrontational approach toward Hezbollah. In May 2018 Lebanon held its first legislative election since 2009. Hezbollah and its allies received a majority of the seats, making Hezbollah politically dominant for the first time. Still, the top-level positions in the parliament remained largely the same, including Hariri as prime minister. It took nine months, however, for the various factions to agree on the formation of a new government. In 2019 the new government struggled to address the country's debt and other crises. Many people in Lebanon grew frustrated over the government's corruption and inability to act. When wildfires ravaged forests in October, the government could not respond because it had been unable to pay for maintenance of the necessary firefighting equipment. Days after the wildfires broke out, the government announced a new tax that angered many people. Many of them took to the streets in massive demonstrations, ultimately demanding that the country's top officials resign. Hariri stepped down later that month. Hassan Diab, a former education minister, replaced him as prime minister in December. The country fell deeper into crisis in 2020. Its currency lost value rapidly, and the country could not make one of its debt payments. The spread of the COVID-19 pandemic to Lebanon in February left the country under lockdown for months, making the already ailing economy worse. In August Beirut suffered extensive damage from an explosion in the port district. It was reportedly caused by the neglected storage of ammonium nitrate, a chemical used in fertilizers and explosives. Anger at the government erupted in more massive protests. Within a week of the explosion Diab and his cabinet resigned. The new government faced many economic and political problems.